Let's get into our first storyteller. What do you guys say? So in uh, describing this storyteller, as I asked her, how should I describe you? She said, community connector. And in some ways that sounds really vague, uh, but when you get to know Jay Washington, uh, that is truly what Jay is. Uh, Jay really kind of epitomizes our mission, building community through story. She even hosts uh, and runs a storytelling event at Finley Market. I think it's called, was it Finley to the People? Finley to the People. Yeah, and so she's all about building community through this power of storytelling. And so I'm really excited to get her to come up and share her story. So you guys welcome Jay Washington up. Thank you. I'm a little nervous, bear with me, but I do understand I'm among family, so. Um, so, I Am Not My Hair is an inspirational song written by Grammy Award-winning artist India Ari, but it is also a story that um, I have, it, it's a story I've traveled on. It's a story that is very much a part of my life, and it started about 20 years ago or so. Now this story, although it begins as a tragedy, is very much a story of triumph. But I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the beginning. The time is 1995. The place, somewhere in the middle of New Jersey. A young woman, 25 years old, decided to go to a hair salon to get her hair done. You know, sometimes we need to get our hair did. You know? um, and so I went to a hair salon. Lots was going on in my life. I was really sad. It was in a place where I was confused. Um, and I wanted something different. I wanted to do something for myself. And so I ended up at a hair salon and decided to get a service or um, a process called a relaxer. Many of you are familiar with it. It is a process that many African-American women get to straighten their hair. And on this particular day, instead of being a process and um, a product that was done well, it was actually done horribly wrong. Um, if I close my eyes, I can actually still feel the sodium hydroxide burning. Um, as the result of that process, I sustained second and third degree burns on 40% of my scalp. And at that point, um, already sort of unsure and confused, became totally um, lost in this idea of being a victim. I lost confidence in myself. I started questioning my femininity and validity as a human being. Um, I questioned if I was beautiful anymore and initially decided that uh, for many reasons I would internalize these feelings. And so I began to question why. Why didn't I stop her? Why didn't I say something before when it started burning initially? And I found myself feeling lost. But again, this isn't a story of tragedy, it's triumph. For in this place of victimhood, I discovered who I was. And though it took a long, long time, I mean, you know, it's been 20 years and I still struggle with identity and what that means. Um, I've learned through this experience that I am not my hair, you know? And I started thinking about the lyrics of the song. I am not my hair, I am not this skin, I am not your expectations. And often I found myself telling people my story and being judged, which causes sort of internalizing those feelings even more so. Um, and it took me a while of building trusting relationships, learning what true vulnerability is and how it affects us as individuals and human beings. Uh, I have the benefit and the blessing of knowing several hundred individuals who, like me, have stories that start as tragedies and end as triumphs. And through that shared vulnerability and shared perspective, I was able to become someone other than that victim. I ultimately became the woman that you guys see today, kind, confident, cocky, creative, <laughs> clear. <laughs> um, but. More importantly, I think it taught me that it isn't about the physical. And I know that's such a simplistic kind of lesson that people feel, you know, is learned, but I don't think so. I think for many of us, there's this journey of figuring out life 
even those with the best circumstances have moments in their life where they question, question their beliefs, question their thought processes, processes, process, uh, question their you know, ability to understand and relate. And so like many people, I went on this journey um, and found that I struggled. You know, because of this um, incident, uh, I find myself often wearing wigs, hair pieces. Um, in 2011, I just decided to shave it all off and just kind of go out and be free and be me. Um, and so through all of that experience, um, I learned that life is bigger than just the physicality. You know, I have great friends who are also story catchers, story activists, story harvesters, story sharers. Um, and many of them have nurtured me and encouraged me through lessons like, you know, I tell my story to many, but I'm selective with who I share it with. So it isn't just about relaying chronologically things that happen, but it is really about providing this sense of vulnerability so that through that lesson, people get the blessing. Um, I've often struggled with this idea of imperfection, but today I grab a chair, pull it up, and sit down in it, man. Because it's all good, it's all relative. I am not my hair. I am not this skin. I am the soul that lives within, and when I remember that, a new story begins. And I'm really excited about that opportunity. I was watching a TED Talk, Take Back the Power of Your Story. It's by noted story catcher, story activist, uh, Mary Alice Arthur. And you guys should check it out. It's really powerful. But one of the things I was really grateful for in seeing that was this idea that we are the creators of our story. And in acknowledging that, we have the ability to change it. And it can either bog you down or lift you up. And I choose to be lifted, you know what I mean? And so understanding that, living your truth, however you feel that is deemed necessary, is the beginning of something beautiful. Um, and I challenge you to step outside of yourself, to sit in the uncomfortableness long enough to see the breakthrough, acknowledge that your story is valid. It is valid no matter what the ingredients are in it. Um, and I'm grateful for the many people who have nurtured and, and encouraged me. Um, I was really nervous about sharing this story, although I've shared it a hundred times. Um, but I think it is that sense of vulnerability that we constantly struggle with. How much do you expose yourself? How much do you allow yourself to bear yourself naked and allow people to judge you, whether it be in a positive or negative way? How much do you accept the gift that we are all given? the gift of your story. And so I ask, just as many of us will tonight, that you take a moment to share your story. I guarantee you, someone will be grateful for that. I know primarily it will be you. But then, like that old commercial, you'll tell two friends, and then they'll tell two friends, and so on, and so on, and so on. I am not my hair. I am not the skin. I am not your expectation. No. I am not my hair. I am not the skin. I am the soul that lives within. Thank you.